Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight, I want to take it to the relationship space. Um, every now and again, I get on my relationship kick just to kind of point out a couple of things and to give my perspective on marriage, single life. I mean, we've all been those things. Not all of them have been married, but a great many of us have been married and divorced like myself. But I, I think a lot of times people try to figure out or validate someone who may be given advice about being in a relationship between a male and a female, a man and a woman, so to speak. And do they have the credentials? Do they have the background? Do they have the experience in order to give such advice? So I've told my history. I told my past about my relationship history. I've been on hundreds, if not thousands of dates. Um, I, I've been married three times. I'm, I'm being very transparent because some people look at, well, if you've been married three times then you're a two time loser. Because people are so quick to blame the male in these relationships. Well, I'll have you to know that I have divorced those women because of the many meeting reasons that I, I won't divulge here, uh, you know, for their for their privacy and their self-respect. But nonetheless, I've been through a great many of things that had me to divorce those women. And I would like to go over some of those things. But first, I think it's important, as we always do, point out statistics, point out uh contrast and comparisons not between any other community except for our own but how things are displayed when it comes to money and wealth and also dealing with relationship and then of course the divestment of it all of both black men and black women but majority black women making this whole quote-unquote um divestment movement so to speak stating that another group of men are better than black men now before i get too warmed up before i get too started here in case anybody wants to know, I'm enjoying an Olivia G tonight, Olivia G. So ladies of your present, please don't mind the smoke, okay? And if anybody wants to comment on anything that they may refute or agree, I will be leaving a link in the chat in case you want to join me and give your perspective and comments. I'm not above that, okay? And if you don't agree on both men and women, hey, we don't need a debate about it. We'll just talk about the facts because that's what's important. So again, before we get hot and heavy, let's do this very quickly. Before we get hot and heavy, let's go over some of the statistics, which is important. So this is coming from blackdemographics.com. Uh, Black Demographics is a statistical site that's made for and by Black Americans, and they extract their information. As you can see, the source down there from the U.S. Census Bureau, and this is this has been updated since year 2020. So these are very relevant and um, very up-to-date statistics. It states here that black marital status, black when it comes to um, black men, 33% married, 52% never married. Black women, 27% married, 48% never married. Now the question is, and I'm gonna jump right to, I'm gonna be back and forth with this family. So again, if any of you guys wanna jump in and talk about this, why is it if black women are diabetic, on a large scale and a large percentage then why aren't black women more married i've been hearing a lot of these videos from tiktok a lot of rooms on clubhouse a lot of videos on youtube and facebook talking about how black women are more, more educated more successful more powerful more influential than black men now we can get all on the white supremacy piece about how this has been a, a gender divide because this is how you dismantle the black nuclear family now we're talking about matriarchy against patriarchy we have all these term red pill group blue pill group we have all these intern fighting of how we tear down one another but the thing about it is facts are facts fiction is fiction so if black women are only 20 percent married who are they married to and if black men are married at 33%, who are they married to? The truth of the matter is family, black women and black men are still married mostly together than any other group. Meaning that we're not divesting inside of these uh, white, Asian, Hispanic, uh, Pacific Islander, so on and so forth, as media tries to display it as such. But there is large movements 
of black women going to social media stating how black men in very layman terms ain't shit. Now, let me just point out the financial benefits of being married. Okay. I've always been one of those guys who wanted to be married and stay married, but it didn't work out that way. So, hey, uh, I guess I'm a two-time loser because I'm on my third marriage, but I'm very, very satisfied and I'm very happy. Okay. So I'm going to go right down to the statistics right here. Now, of course, um, if you, this is not within your age group, just understand what I'm getting to. It says household assets of 51 to 60. And these are people who are under retirement age, okay? And it's stating how much money that these people have accumulated by being married. Intact is being married at $643,000 and remarried at $459,000. Never married, they are all never married and divorced. They kind of go hand in hand when it comes to that, so to speak. But if you notice, those people are the poorest. Single people tend to have less money than married people. And I'm going to tell you why. If you look at this little excerpt at the bottom, it says average wealth, real estate holdings, retirement savings, cash, and other investments minus the debt because you are in a partnership. You are in a relationship. You cover each other's back. This is how it works, especially if you're in a harmonious, communicative, loving relationship. Not one of these so-called old school relationships that I keep hearing women, okay? I only can speak from the man point of view here, ladies. So don't think as this as an attack, but oh, I'm old fashioned. I'm used to the man doing X, Y, and Z. I, I don't understand that terminology, ladies. I, I really don't. Please explain to me how you are old fashioned, but yet again, you have your own. You have your own house and or apartment. You have your own car. You have your own job and or career. But you're stating that you're old fashioned. We don't even understand the term when a woman tells us, oh, she's old fashioned and she's used to a man doing A, B and C. See, the old fashioned that my grandparents told me about their generation and the generations before them is that a man used to court a young woman from their household by the approval of that family and mostly the dad and sometimes even chaperone to certain dates not picking her up or meeting somewhere in a neutral spot but i get it i know i know we're in the 21st century about to go into the 22nd century those days are over but yet again the women are still stating that i want to be in an old-fashioned marriage i want to be in an old-fashioned relationship that shit is over because you have your own money, but you don't want to share your money with a man. See, this is what I don't understand. If we are building a partnership, if we are dating or, or thus we are engaged or we want to be married, why can't this be a, a, a I don't want to use the word trans here, but trans a transactional relationship where we are helping each one out? Some people are very, very delusional with their ask of certain people. And unfortunately, women is you. I don't understand how women uh, want careers and make an, a substantial amount of money, but then want the men to carry the weight of taking care of a family, a house, cars, while you just go live your best life. What, what is your assets being used for? Is it built? Is it being used for building a business, uh, buying land, uh, because I keep hearing these new generational women. They're not cooking. They're not cleaning. They want a nanny. They want a maid. What the hell is going on in the black community? I'm just pointing out the facts here, family. Household assets of um, 51 to 60-year-old men and women by marital status and education. They're stating that people who are educated, being married together, or work anywhere from $1.2 million and up, remarried, $925,000 and up, so on and so forth. And of course, if you're divorced, those amounts are less than. So let me go here with this because this is what a lot of us are hearing 
from the anti-divestment group. Yeah, there's women on the internet, especially on TikTok, that are now anti-divestment, even though they may date outside their race. And I think this is very important. I think this is very um, um, pertinent that we cover some of these women and what they're actually saying. Now, let me know if the volume is loud enough for you guys to hear so you get um oh all the these, here. these um Derek jackson and these relationship gurus they're always pandering mm -hmm. but now i see black women pandering to other black women you're taking your unhealed trauma or your trauma that you're actively navigating through but you're not far, far enough and emotionally removed and divested enough from the triggers to actually give advice and it's just rage clicking. So I was watching the video with Melanated Crowns talking about the divestment movement and how like a lot of women, some but not all, cause y'all know, y'all begin really super tight, some but not all, okay? <laughs> how some black women in these communities have a lot, well, in this community has a lot of trauma. And I have to agree with her. Some of the comments that I'd be reading y'all sound like y'all not there like y'all touched and then i have to agree with her because even on this app when i talk about my traumatic experiences dating interracially like i've met good men but i've had some traumatic dating experiences with palm colored men with arabic men and when i talk about my dating experiences here come the divestment movement saying oh palm colored man could never and i'm like okay so the the sister right there made a really really good point um, and the term palm colored men is basically talking about men other than melanated, dark skin, melanated black men. Right. But what she basically stating is that she had horrible experiences with those men as well, um, because the divestment crowd would have our black women to believe that marrying someone who is non black, you would have a better experience and, and better relationship. But here, here, the, here's the major question. Within this divestment crowd, within this divestment population, why aren't these women getting married to these better men? Let me tell you something. I went to a predominantly white college. And while going to that predominantly white college, white boys would drink, get high, and tell all the business, just as some brothers would at the current time. So we in dorm rooms, frat parties, sorority parties, um, chopping it up and i'm listening to these white guys and they're listening to black guys talking about oh i want to get with this girl and this girl and they're from different races mostly black and white and the white guys are telling me oh i want to get with this this black chick right here and i say hey man you you know this would you ever marry a black woman and i'm trying to tell you depending on how you know slurred up they are how much they've been drinking how much they've been smoking they will they will tell you nah man i won't marry no black chick i, I couldn't bring her home but they want to have that experience with a black woman, meaning as one white boy told me, hey, I need that check mark. I said, what do you mean I, you need that check mark? He said, well, you know, I've been with white women. I've been with Asian women. I need to be with a black woman. And then he said, I want to be with all different types of black women. I want to be from black women from America, black Caribbean um, women, and then black African women. I was like, oh, wow. He said, uh, black men don't do that. I'm saying, I'm pretty sure some black men do. Where they would never marry a Becky or a Holly or a Kim or a Lee. They would never marry them, but they would just have sexual relations with them. But this was the divestment crowd where have our black women to believe that is better on the whiter side or as the palm colored side. Let me continue. There's a, there's a lot of information here, family, because this is the reason why black men in general really slow down is there anything really slow down why they stop marrying black women i'm not stating that black men are heavily divesting black men are some of the most sought out men sexually and for marriage than any other group of men that's why you see us with all types of women now me personally that's not my cup of tea i love my black women i'm married to a black woman all my women that i've been married to have been black have i ever been with a non-black woman the answer is yes and i understand that was a mistake because there are some cultural differences there are some lifestyle differences that we need to understand there's just 
not a good match. There's a couple of black women, there's a couple of black men that will get along with the other, uh, with, with non-black people, maybe because of the environment they grew up in, maybe because of the colleges they went to, but it's not really many of us thinking that we're gonna go to the other side, which I call the darker side, pun intended, you get what I'm getting at, that you believe that the relationships will be better. You must be outside your mind if you believe that. But let I want you to hear this. And this is kind of one of the major reasons why black men stop marrying black women, believe it or not. Listen to this. I could have done to save our relationship. Keisha, I think you're a great person. You know, I think you're a good person. And I appreciate the fact that you realized how closed off you were. You know, but to answer your question, I think you could have saved the relationship by being more appreciative. You know, putting more effort, you know, the same way I did, you know, and I kept stepping towards you, but you kept stepping back, you know, and marriage was out the question because don't nobody want to marry anyone who not showing the same appreciation as them or who not giving their effort like them. So that just pushed me back, you know, and as far as right now, I have a girlfriend, you know, and, and I love her to death. And that's what I want to get you to see that you got to appreciate the people that's in your life. You know, the people that come in your life, you don't know how long they're going to be there. You got to appreciate them while they're there because when they're gone and you don't appreciate them, they got every right to walk away from you. you know, and that's what I wanted to get you to see. So I'm sorry if it hurt. You know, I, I'm sorry if it hurt you, but I just hope you got the clothes you were looking for. Is that that part right there, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the major reasons why, in general, that I believe, of course, this is my conjecture, why black men really stop dating black women on in a large percentage is because black men do not feel appreciated because we feel like whatever we do is never enough now when the late uh brother kevin samuels um before he passed he 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 built a large following of black men and women and a lot of people were celebrating his death especially black women because of the harsh recourse that he gave a large population of them of their ratchet culture and the way that they thought about things and what they believed they were entitled to see one thing that men deal in is logic and when things are unlogical our mind is like a computer and, and when you say things that are unlogical our mind begins to shut down because the shit doesn't make any sense you want groups of men you want black men majority that don't make a certain amount of money that this society has put a cap on uneducated and also educated men that we won't fulfill the amount that you believe it takes to build and create a family. Now, this whole high value man, high figure man, I want a man to make six figures, this, that, and the other. My question is, why is that? Because someone put in your head that that's what it takes to raise and nurture and have a great life. But what if he makes $50,000? Unfortunately, majority of black men, anywhere from forty-five dollars to $55,000. I know you guys heard this before. You can hear all sorts of terms, but it's always in that forty dollars to $50,000 range. And this is true, statistically. But what if she made $50,000 and he made $50,000 and you guys made uh, um, uh, over $100,000 a year. What's wrong with that? Is that not enough to build, buy a house, uh, two cars, and actually have a family and have all the things that you need in order to survive and take a couple of vacations throughout the year? For some reason, six figures have become this very unimaginable, fictitious number that men are doing overly successful and they are rich. Let me tell you, family, I've been making six figures for a very long time and I'm not rich. I am not rich. The only reason my house is as big as it is and still is not as big as some other people I know who are rich, because my house is only 37,000 square, 37,000, uh, 3,700 square feet. It's because of the area we live in. See, this is part of the conversation where a lot of ladies like to drop off 
because they don't want to hear the meat and potatoes of it all, the statistics, the numerical amount that it takes to raise a family, that you don't need a man that makes six figure. Because guess what? Just as the late and great Kevin Samuel was saying, I'm no follower of his to the point because the brother was to a fall. I didn't agree with everything he said, of course, but he, he said some very relevant things. That's only 5 to 10% of the male population. And then if you want to date a black man, guess what? We can cut that number in half. This is what black men are susceptible to when trying to date a black woman, not being appreciative. Here's another one. Let me let me point this one out to you. Unfortunately, when she was away, all we had was communication. So because you know we couldn't be as intimate as we wanted to only on trailer visits. So I would visit her, they would say, put your hands on the table so I couldn't touch her. So one thing we learned was communication. So that really helps a lot. It'll put you on a path of fixing when you listen to understand instead of listening to respond. Unfortunately, when she was away, all we had was communication. So, because, you know, we couldn't be as intimate as we wanted to only on trailer visits. So I would visit her. They would say, put your hands on the table so I couldn't touch her. So one thing we learned was communication. So that really helps a lot. It'll put you on a path of fixing when you listen to understand instead of listen to respond. Unfortunately, when she was away, all we had was communication. So, because Okay, so let me let me point out some things about communication. I remember in communication class in college, you send out um, a source of information through a communication channel to the responder or to the receiver, and you are awaiting feedback. How do most arguments start with a with a disagreement or a disappointment of what was expected and what really happened? right that's how most arguments start the expectation of something you believe should have happened in a certain way at a certain time at a particular rate and then when you guys start to communicate that information the sender sends a message through the communication channel to the receiver and then the sender is now waiting for a response also known as feedback what happens between two people who, um, especially one person, is more eradicated, more upset, or displeased with the outcome of a situation. What occurs? Those feedback channels get mutilated by over-talking, yelling, putting down, calling people all sorts of names. Because women know physically that they really can't be the man. There, there's really um, no relationship that I know that most women can be the man physically. So how do they hurt men? They hurt men verbally. And if they believe that another group of men are going to tolerate their disrespect like black men have, then they are really uh, and they are shockingly will be disappointed. Because as I stated before, there's women in this divestment crowd who are now being anti-divestment, not necessarily uh, pro-black dating, but let me point something out with this sister was stating that I thought was very important too. Meet Shay Sade. I have no issue with interracial relationships, but more often I see women, especially black women, promoting interracial marriage as the best option when they don't know how to get along with their own men. And if you think that you who don't know how to get along with men within their own community are going to have an easy time going into another community and just finding the high value man. Because let's just be honest, it's not like you women want, you know, average guys. You all want the high value rich men. Uh, you have another thing coming. If the issue is you don't know how to get along with men, then you're going to run into that issue no matter what community you're trying to date or marry into. I really think a better strategy would be actually focusing on just being marriage material, focusing on the qualities actually attract men and then from there you'll be able to find good men within your community or maybe even outside of the community but i think it's really unhealthy when we just promote interracial marriage as like the best option and not actually deal with a lot of the issues that are impacting women meet shay shay okay so i think she explained it <laughs> very very massively and i want to take it to another level why are black men leaving the country dating and marrying non-black women because we're talking about how black men essentially um to a certain percent 
and to a fault, stop marrying black women. It's the non-appreciative attitude. It's the disrespect. And now we have this whole new divestment crowd. And see, I don't, and I'm not talking about divestors who are silent in their divestment. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about black women who go out and date and marry non-black men and say nothing on social media or to their groups of friends. They're just happy with the guy that they met. And I'm perfectly fine with that. But this new wave, this new um, um, anarchy of black divestment women going out, telling other black women, hey, it's better on the whiter side. White men treat you better. Arab man treat you better. Asian man treat you better. But when we look at the statistics family, as I showed you before, black women are the ones who are less married than any other group. Now, this is from blackdemographics.com. And black men are more married than black women. But then again, you will have black women on social media stating how they're more educated. They're, they have more how um, high status jobs. They have more power. And that now it's a new matriarchy instead of patriarchy. Um, patriarchy is how black men and women from the very emancipation of freedom in this country have built wealth meaning the black nuclear family. And I'm not an advocate of anyone divesting. I believe that we are better together because no one understands us like we do. We have a unique exper uh, experience. We live in a unique environment and we are a unique community. Just the other day, I did a video pointing out how Africans, mostly Nigerians, call us wild animals, the Akata word, and stating that we have no culture. I had to debunk that. But family, this rhetoric that we see on the internet today, it, it really has to stop because the only people that this pleases, the only system that it support, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? It's a system of white supremacy. I see I got my brother in here, Jermaine Anderson. Good evening to you too, sir. Brent C. We got Jerome Jones. Good evening to you. I see my buddy, Laverne Gibbs. Uh, Ambitious Hustler says, man, I'm a 23, never got married. I seen how my cousin wife took everything from him. I remember him building his business up since I was in elementary and she took half and made him cry hard. I'm not going to dive too deep on that one because there's many elements and, and many um, existential circumstances that I don't know of. So a lot of things could occur. Now, I kind of want to get to the economics of things because I think that a lot of times in our community, our women do not understand the, um, the economics, the salary the amount of money that black men actually make. They they see these things on social media. They see these things on rap videos and R&B videos. Um, they highlight a couple of these people who are making millions of dollars in this sort of culture. And that all came from, uh, well, not love and basketball. What's, some, what's some of those shows? Uh, the Housewives of Atlanta, the Housewives of these people, the Housewives of those people. So let's talk about it, family, where I'm at. I'm all over the place. Here we go. Black men. It states here that 66% of black men are employed. 27% are not in the labor force. Only 6% of black men are unemployed. And about 1% of black men are in the armed forces. Black women. 70% are employed. 5% are unemployed. 25% are not in the labor force. And compared to the U.S., of course, our numbers are not as much. But this is about Black empowerment. This is about Black economics. And it starts off from dating, relationship, and marriage. Black men and women are divesting from each other at a very large rate. And the only group of people who are smiling are those who want to see our demise. I, 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 I swear that there's a group 
of old men somewhere in a large room smoking on some good age cigars, laughing their ass off at social media, how black people around the world are not only dividing themselves from one another, but we're infighting and destroying ourselves from within. And what do they do? The only thing they do is give you a platform to run your damn mouth. Now, for any of you people who are very religious, who are very spiritual, I'll take this one excerpt from the Bible. I don't know which scripture it came from, but it's something like, that's why Paul told women in the church to be quiet. He said, shut your damn mouth. Let me continue, family. Because I think there's a lot of things I can show you here that will kind of give you more insight than what I, I can ever give you. There's just so many things. Let, let me just show you this video. Maybe you can interpret what this young lady is talking about. I have no freaking idea what the hell she's talking about. It kind of chops my hide. Oh, Texas term. <laughs> listen to this craziness. Just listen. I'm gonna tell y'all this. And I'm gonna be this, and I mean this in love. If you are a friend and you're going through a relationship problem and we had lunch, I'm going to give you that little piece of time to vent. And if I be like, hey, girl, come on, let's go on, not later. Let's, you know, we're going we, we gonna to just get our mind in a good place. We're just going to have some good good atmosphere for the festivities that is upon us. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? If you attest to going out with us, we don't want to hear that shit when we go out, okay? Because you've been ta you talked about it already. We know. But we're trying to get our mind off of it. We don't want to hear that shit. We don't hear it. We don't hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm going hit right now, girl, trying to show me a text. Say, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> mm. Trying to have fun. I'm bald headed for a reason. I want to be, I want to do hood rat stuff. Like, I want to do yeah. hood rat stuff. I'm going to tell y'all this. Now, okay, oh, yes, family, buddy. maybe you guys can interpret. First, she's talking about. A girlfriend, she's going through uh, maybe a debacle with her significant other and she invited out and she allowed her to vent and after a while, she really don't want to hear it. She want to go out and have fun, but she said hood rat stuff. Now, this whole new ratchet and hood rat culture, and in my opinion, I don't know the young lady, but she seems very masculine, right? And this, this in her disposition, this in her demeanor, that's not, so I can just tell, that's not somebody I would want to date. That, that That's just... And unfortunately, a lot of these women who are, I mean, I, I would hate to say this, but below the age of 35, they're mostly like this. Very, very large number of women are now being so damn masculine that a lot of black men do not want to date masculine women because people, <laughs> a lot of communities already view black men as alpha males, right? This is why they're trying to emasculate us and say that a large um, portion of black men are on the down low, aka homosexual, which is nothing wrong. Whatever you want to do, you want to be part of the LGBT community, that's perfectly fine. I have nothing against that. But what I'm saying is they're trying to emasculate the black male, stating that a large percentage, a large percentage of us are part of the LGBT community. And every time I see a movie, I see a show, I see a series, they are putting black people at the forefront of all of this debauchery and over inflating their perception that majority of us are sexual degenerates and largely a part of the LGBT community. I'm not saying, I am not saying people who are part of the LGBT community devolves themselves in debauchery. I'm saying that's the debauchery of the perception of Hollywood and those who make influential films and shows. That is what I am saying. Because it's overinflated. We got to set the record straight, family. Because if we are the third largest population in America, why are we have the highest numbers depicted on the big screen of homosexuality? Why is that? Because they understand that, and you guys heard this before, that your eyes are the, are the gateways, are the portals of your soul. They understand by depiction, 
they understand by imagery how that can be so influential because guess what majority of people on social media all day every day that's how they know this they have these think tank groups they see um a lot of black people and again we're only the third largest population we're heavily on these social media sites and they just push this rhetoric knowing that you're going to eat it up and going on clubhouse to me is almost like an, an experiment where i'm just seeing a lot of us again emotionally charged yelling and screaming on all these social media sites on, on on twitter spaces on clubhouse all of these things family and the only thing it's doing is destroying us i remember a time where uh, growing up my uncles used to tell me that black women were the backbone of the household i remember a time when my uncles used to tell me that black women was the backbone of the household let me tell you this my wife she is the backbone of this household but from what i see in social media and on the streets black women are no longer the backbone of the household if anything they are the destruction they believe there's some woman movement this whole new feminist crap that black men are part of the patriarchy that's oppressing them and putting them down have you guys heard this rhetoric that black men are part of the patriarchy that's oppressing black women what the what Stay with me, family. Stay with me. Yo, let me tell you something real quick. The amount of relationships that fail because of pride and ego, it's like, it's astronomical. Like, people really will fight just because they don't want to be wrong. You know, they'll be like, listen, I don't want <laughs> I don't care what anybody say. You know, I'm not going to say I did this. I'm not going to admit to nothing. I'm not going to work on myself. Even though clearly y'all in the relationship, y'all the closest people to each other. So y'all clearly see each other's problems, right? And then they break up. There's kids involved, there's, 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 there's emotions involved, there's, there's, there's trauma involved. And then this person's going to leave and go to the next relationship and say, listen, well, this person was, was asking this and me and that. And I ain't really, you know, they're crazy or they this or they that. And then the cycle continues. And I and this ain't just a man thing. This is a woman thing. This is a human being thing. Human being thing. Like, once you realize that a lot of your problems is never going to be fixed until you actually have self-awareness, you're going to just carry them same baggage to the next relationship, man. People need to understand that. People don't understand that. You know, let me tell you. Something. So for quite some time, black women have been requiring black men to be accountable for being head of the household, being accountable for their actions. But if you notice, family, when you show the mirror, when you flip the mirror in the other direction, there's no accountability there. And before I forget. Uh, this is one of my great brothers right here, Ricky Manor. He has a channel. I want you guys to go and support him. He does a lot of political commentary. Um, so go and support that brother as well. Subscribe to his channel, Ricky Manor. Thank you for joining me, sir. But there's no accountability, right? Because for far too long, if you just look at the music, the music from the, the 90s, I don't want no scrub, put a ring on it. We, we got all of this music that essentially are fighting the patriarchy of black men, that all of this power and authority that we have being head of the household, only making $40,000, barely supporting our dancers, yet alone a family. And yeah, I know family, I know. There's a great accountability that black men today, especially in my generation, have to take account for. But that, that, only represents and this is these are very arbitrary numbers around 10 percent of our population those dusty dudes those dusty dudes that majority of them have three and four or five kids by all these different women but majority of men that i know upstanding men have children with one or two women tops not three four five six seven those are the dusty dudes and then again we have to understand the environment in which these guys operate. See, these women want these thugs. They dating shit back from Tupac. They want the thug love. They don't want no corny, nice guy. Ladies, 
the corny nice guy, the nerd, the geek that you didn't want before. Those are the ones who are making over six figures. Those are the ones who have their own businesses. The ones that you didn't want. The ones that you didn't want to plow the pavement when in their early 20s. Now you want these men in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. Now because they worth over a half a million dollars or more. Now you want them. See, now in the black community, especially with our black women, unfortunately, they have a sense of entitlement. They believe because they carry around a freaking vagina that we supposed to open up our finances and buy them everything they want. They believe they deserve a house on a hill. They believe they deserve a Range Rover or an Audi. They believe that they deserve a maid or a nanny. They believe they should have no accountability of a household or their man. And when they don't get what they want, they pout, they argue, they tell their girlfriend, he ain't shit. I wanted that Birkin bag, girl, he ain't bad for me. That's that ego and proud and that sense of entitlement, which has never really been in our community, but unfortunately really started in the early 20th century. It really started then. Let me continue because I, I think these videos kind of shows the environment in which a lot of men who's still in the dating world and thank God I'm out of it, what they are going to. Now, <laughs> I, I got to show this one. I really didn't want to show this particular video clip. The sister is speaking some facts, but I do have some disagreements. But for the sense of transparency, I'll let it ride. Okay, I'm going to let it ride because I believe what she said um is relevant to a My certain degree. What kind of message does this send to young black girls to see these prominent trailblazing pioneering black women both married to white men? And the other now before she comes in, I love what this brother is talking about. He's saying, you know, what image, um, what showing of example it shows to young black women that these young uh, these, these these powerful black influential pioneer women when they get a sense of power and status how they essentially date and marry white men or non-black men and this, this black woman is going to come in and somewhat uh, debate and refute what he's saying and again I slightly agree with her on some terms but I disagree with mostly what she's saying but again I think it's relevant the other thing Let's talk about it. Let me tell you what message it is sending to young black girls. First being that you can still be about your culture, your generation, your values, your ethics, and also date outside of your race. It doesn't make you any less black. She is black and people know that we have been rooting for her. She's been rooting for our community and she dates outside of her race. It also sends the message to go where you are loved. There are black men talking on podcasts about how women are this, women are that, and about how high earning and high value women are not dateable. They're not marriage material. Okay, okay. Be be before she continues, before she continue, I, I don't like to put down our sisters. I, I really don't. But I, I'm just going to say that this young lady right here. I wouldn't date unless she was the last woman on earth. And I'm not going to go to the point where I'm going to say I wouldn't touch her if she's the last woman on earth because I'm a man and we were the last people on earth. Then, unfortunately, yeah. But <laughs> I wouldn't date this woman if she was, a you know, uh, there's not a chance in hell she would have an opportunity with me, let alone she would state that she probably wouldn't have an opportunity with me. But nonetheless, I, I just kind of wanted to sh show her physical appearance. Parents. And again, I'm not trying to degrade her by any uh, chance of the word, but first and foremost, the hair is, is decent enough. I don't, when women do their hair like that, that's fine. I don't like the tracks and the weaves. I don't like that. But braids, that's perfectly fine. I just don't like the hair everywhere that tracks and weaves actually have. Um, my wife knows I love natural hair. She mostly wears her hair naturally. But when it comes to the amount of weight, physical weight, that this woman is this plan, you can already tell she's um, morbidly obese. So that's first and foremost. And I'm not body shaming, body shaming 
this is just my preference, right? Because everybody got preference. Because all these women, when all of these men making six figures because of their preference. So that's my preference. I don't want someone who's morbidly obese. I don't want somebody who's super fat. I don't. That's the first thing. Second thing is these bull rings. What the hell is going on? People are stating that these bull rings are usually worn by very beautiful women to disfigure their beauty uh, to a certain degree that breaks up the grunge. I can't get into it, family. It's a lot what I was reading about bull rings, but that makes her look less attractive even more. Then she's in the video, right? And then I don't like all the different color hair, okay? I just don't like it. That, again, that's preference. Then she she has her um, her chest out and all the discoloration in between her cleavage. And the, none, of, none of this is attractive to me. So again, listening to her, I take with a grain of salt because you're not a good figure of what most black men would want. I'll just say that. Maybe some guy, some black men out there, it's very difficult for me to say this, right? <laughs> but there's some guys out there who like heavier set women. I'm not that one. And majority of black men that I know do not like obese women. I'll let her finish. And high earning. It shows that a successful man, a high value man, is not afraid of a successful woman. It also sends the message that a lot of white men are very, very willing and very, very loving of their black partners who are very about their culture and their generation and politics. Basically saying not all white men are wanting you to be Candace Owens. And it also shows to young girls, or at least it should. And I don't like the double neck. I don't, I'm a sorry. Life, a I successful to career on their own. He is also a politician. He is very successful. Ask the same now, if this woman is giving relationship advice, my question is, what man is listening to this? What woman is listening to this? And I'm looking at some of her hashtag here. Hashtag femininity. Hashtag divestment movement. Hashtag self-love. Hashtag black women. Do they understand that this whole uh, feminist movement <laughs> was created by white women and they group you guys in for numbers and use and abuse you and now they're discarding you and here's another thing family not to bring in other races other ethnics but I'm not saying that other groups don't have similar videos on social media but do you see the algorithm algorithms algorithm sorry pushing these videos to the front versus the way they do our videos and that's just a question please answer it in the chat now as i told you before if any guy any woman wants to uh join the broadcast here let me know i'm putting the link inside of the check as i promised you guys earlier this is a very yeah, and very important man, topic really now i want like you to see this. look, look this. darky marky i don't like the darkies okay real simple Okay. Oh, what though, bro? Red bone forever <laughs> on my mama. Like, y'all be mad aggressive. Like, okay. My bro, y'all right. They do okay. be here. They too dark. Okay. Right. Y'all mad at people's <laughs> preference. Well, maybe I'll just date outside my race then. I don't want to hassle y'all. Date outside race. I still love race. a lot of y'all. You a cool, you know what? You a sellout. Sellout. Okay. But you don't want to you don't want to date me no you're dark skinned and misandrous and you too aggressive and woke okay you think just because i want you you should get outside your race right 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 right, 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 right. it's us or nothing Fuck. yeah i'm looking to find me a black man that i really really like but uh look darky marky i don't like the darkies okay real simple Okay. Oh, what though, bro? Red bone forever <laughs> on my mama. Like, y'all be mad aggressive. Like, okay. My bro, y'all right. They do okay. be here. They too dark. Okay. Right. 
y'all mad at people's preference. Well, maybe y'all just date outside my race then. I don't want to hassle y'all. Date outside but I still love race. a lot of y'all. You a cool, you know what? You a sellout. Okay. So I kind of let that go um run his course around two times. <laughs> Family, I'm I'm sorry. Can we just look at these women again? And again, I, I know I'm not trying to degrade our women, but family, you know, put a number one in the chat if one of you guys would date one of the women you see in this picture. I really want you to look at the picture. Just tell me if you would date one of the women that you see here. And of course, there's a link in the chat right now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to join, go and click that link and I'll bring you in and listen to your comments. Okay. But again, I, I just had to point that out because I, I feel like this whole divestment is coming from a group of women that black men don't want to date in the first place. I know a lot of black men, they were like, yeah, you can have her. <laughs> they would tell you, you can go ahead and have her. We got to listen to this one too, family. Here we go. You know how I can tell that there's spiritual warfare in the community? It is anytime you see people try to put up boundaries around something very sacred, there's upheaval. There is something about a woman, um, there's something about a demographic of women that's the most unprotected, the most sexually violated, um, perpetually abandoned, uh, perpetually turned into single mothers. There's something about a demographic of women really working very hard to improve their circumstances, right? Because many things are out of their control. So while many of these women are trying to improve their circumstances, um, they're also choosing to put up boundaries to kind of either divest, distance, or keep themselves away from people that don't share the same values or unable to kind of show up in a way that says, I love you in action. Because at the end of the day, guys, whatever you want to call it, just understand that people put their money or invest their time consistently into things that they value. And for some reason, you don't really see that too much in the community outside of the woman. Okay. So there's something around there's between the systematic issue. And as you guys know, with black people, we're obviously, there's a lot of systematic conditioning, especially within our men. Um, and also they are twice as impacted, but understand this woman. I see. Uh, I got my brother woman, uh, you don't Vern in the chat. Hey, Vern, go and click that link, brother. Let me hear your, let me hear your thoughts on this topic right here. He said that I'm too dark. Boy, I love this complexion. So does my wife. Lord have mercy. Yeah, Mary, go ahead and click that. I want to hear your thoughts on this because I think it's a very important topic that um, a lot of our people really need to hear. And there's been a lot of videos. I'm not the only one pointing these things out. There's a lot of um, black women that pointing these things out. Um, th there's a lot of um, men who are also commenting on these sorts of things. Because again, I, I think the major goal that I have is for us to be with one another. As I stated before, I believe that we are better together. And there's just a lot of men out there that's no longer tolerating, uh, you know, this depiction that we are degenerates and that other men are better than we are. Now, the fact of the matter is, do other men make more money than black men? As a whole, yes, they do, but that's by design. We won't get into that tonight. But I do want to show you what a loving black family looks like. Okay, I'm going to show you. This is some pictures uh, that my wife and I took while we was in Jamaica. And I'm only showing this uh, because of reference. That's my beautiful black wife that is very feminine, very uh, funny. She's a partner. She's a supporter. She's the backbone of my family, okay? She's the backbone of our family. We was taking some really funny pictures there in Jamaica, Ocho's Rios. We're trying some sort of uh, shot that she had here. Um, yes. So we had a we had a great time together, and this is what it looked like. This is the Bob Marley house. Because family, I like to essentially practice what I preach. I'm scrolling very fast here, this kind of, and there she is right there. I believe we're at dinner. At one of the restaurants on the resort but we had a very very lovely time there in uh, ocho's reels jamaica 
But nonetheless, I want us to be together. I want us to be on one accord. I want us to be um, very communicative to one another where we can communicate without discord, downgrading, using profanity towards one another. This is what the system wants us to do. This is why algorithms and social media push videos to the forefront when they are essentially <laughs> dividing us and separating us by the sheer rhetoric that's being pushed on all of these platforms. Oh, my brother says he's on a flight. Okay, he's on a flight. Let me show you one more clip here, family. <laughs> listen to this. Black people, listen up. There is a very deliberate movement going on right now um, centered around black women divesting from black men. While I agree that black women should spend more time um, evaluating and loving on themselves at this very moment, I think it's very peculiar that a lot of these divest movements that I've seen are not asking black women to divest from black men in an, in an effort to... Um, find healing within themselves but it's more so like they're asking black women to divest from black men to date white men and i i, I don't know i'm not i'm not completely sold i'm not sold at all that dating a white man would be better than dating a black man it's almost like y'all figured out that black men have issues and then y'all were like well, let me just ignore all the issues that white white men have and pretend like they're about to give me this princess lifestyle because that's what looks right on TikTok. It's it's not reality. Like the reality is that black women have been treated like Now, that. I want to point out something here on this particular video. I don't know if you guys has read the transcripts here, the statement uh, that this young lady put up. These divestment movements are not giving nuisance to relationships for black women switching races of men will not solve our problem right there she should have stopped right there she was on 100 on code when she said switching races meaning divesting will not solve our problems i'm seeing a lot of black women talk about self-love and self-care they have been traumatized by past relationships black men as well but right there i think that's when she should have stopped in my opinion then she goes on to talk about how divesting should be about self-discovery discovering what 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 does Okay. All right, there we go. What what does divesting Okay, I'm trying to get this connection right. Sorry about that. Night. I'm just going to end the video here, family. I think I've said enough. I see that I'm having um, some issues here. But there is one comment if the internet will allow if you notice when people are actually trying to heal and mend and support one another all of a sudden the internet mess up but if i'm going hard on politics anyway kane says do you think that black people are too deeply enrooted in the whole mgtow or magto in relationship field 
uh kane can you explain what you are referring to when you say that there also is a link in the chat room if you guys want to join kane if you want to explain that but <laughs> i see we got shanty in here uh if you want to get on uh shan i want to hear your perspective on this you're one of the few ladies who have commented if you want to get on and when you join the link you don't have to show your video you can just hear your sound you can uh actually shut off your video but i will love a woman's perspective on this whole divestment and that, that black men should now be accountable which we in a sense have always been accountable because black women black women in a sense have made black men ever since the 90s accountable for our actions but now as the tables are turning especially when Kevin Samuels come out, and I know there's a lot of black brothers didn't 100% agree with Kevin Samuels. Then you have those people who totally were like a cult following Kevin Samuels that believe every word he said, which I am not. I'm married to a black woman, which I absolutely love. But if Kane, oh, Chance says she don't want to get on. Okay, sister, that's fine. Kane says men go their own way. Seems like black people in general are just very susceptible to it. Um, Kane, you raise a good point. And again, I'm going to tell you the truth of it all. I don't believe that these projections are being made um, from, from the ground up, from the root by Black people. I think this is a narrative that has been being pushed by mass media and certain political parties because they understand that by building a Black nucleus family, that is how black people on hold one will get on code and start to build wealth see the term that i like to use we are better together versus as you said men go their own way and women go their own way being a separatist doesn't help you to build in power you have to have people in your corner to support you and some, some people will disagree with this, depending on what crowd you follow. Um, I'm not an old school guy stating that women need to stay at home and take care of the household, nurture the kids, even though some people like to believe because they follow the scripture, that is a women's obligations and job. That men belong to God and women belong to the man. Okay? I can go both ways with this because if she has a prominent career and she gets pregnant, the man now has to take majority of the household bills, especially if she's out of work. But if she's the breadwinner, some people believe that that household is out of order. Why is that? Because we have been, we have been raised on Christian values. Now, do I believe that men are the protectors of the home? Yes. Uh, my wife and I, we saw a movie today called Beast, right? And it was basically about um, some lions who, one of these lions went rogue because these poachers killed the, his, his entire uh, pride of lions. And now he was essentially killing every human being that he could find. There's another group of lions that one of the white men, I don't know how white men have a better relationship with lions than the Africans who are in that country. The whole Tarzan effect that a white man in junk in the jungle raised by animals can speak to the animals and swing on vines. Does nothing here, no there. Um, but the women are the ones that go out and hunt, and men are tasked with the job of protecting the pride, protecting the group. Now, and if you look at some of the ancestral pe uh, people from Africa, if you look at some of their history, uh men used to kind of go out and hunt for meat while the women are the ones who are doing the farming they're nurturing the young they're uh making up remedies they're doing all sorts of things but this is not the times that we live in anymore these are not the times that we live in we have apparatuses and machines to assist us with strength and ingenuity and building and structures there's a lot of women who are in business The question is, family, we understand the things that separate us from one another. But what are some of the things that bind us together? 
what are some of the things that join us together? It's very, very easy to make a video on how one group of people, the gender divide, is worse than another group of people. Am I pointing to blame 50-50? Absolutely not. See, black men far too long have been taking this shit lying down. And now that black men are talking back, there's an issue. See, a lot of times black men used to keep quiet about this. We really didn't say too much. But now that women are divesting, talking down to us, yeah, girl, I'm dating this white man. He much better than a black man. And they're falling to the devil's trap. Let me read what the sister says. She says, I just feel that we as black women should completely turn away from all worldly standards regarding relationship. We need to turn to God and war cry for the return of the black men to black women. I can agree. I can agree to that to a certain extent. I can definitely agree to black women returning to black men. And Chan says, just take, just take, I guess she's meaning just take my word. That's what she is doing. Okay. So family, this is not a video that will probably never go viral because at the end of the day, I want black men and women to be harmonious together. Whether you decide to date one another or not, we don't need to put down one another. We don't need to degrade one another. We don't need to be degenerates to one another. We, let alone, can't even live with one another. The only thing I'm asking, <laughs> if we can love one another, that's all.